Yeah, I wanted to mention about this World War III thing a lot of people have been talking about. It's not going to happen <clears throat> right away. The reason why is, there's, according to the Bible, there's other things that have to take place first. First, let's take a look at Matthew, the 24th chapter. And Jesus' disciples tell us, ask him, when will these things be? What will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the end of the age, the end of this system? And um, Jesus tells them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The word Christ there means anointed. And shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors, rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And that's what we're. That's where we're living in. You know this thing about against Syria, and on and on with all the different countries there in the Middle East that they're going after. These are wars and rumors of wars. But the end is not yet. Why not? Well, if we look in the, in uh, Daniel, the twelfth, the eleventh chapter, we we'll we'll, it also. Uh, describes this time period we're living in here and verse 40 of Daniel 11 it says and in the time of the end it doesn't mean then when Daniel's saying the time of the end he doesn't mean the, the time of revelation but building up to that you know at that time you can consider that the time of the end and at the time of the end the, the shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. You see, all these wars that are taking place and rumors of wars, they're actually trying to, to conquer the whole world, to set up that new world order. And to gather all the kings of the earth together. That's why we're having so many of these wars, especially in the Middle East, you know. And what does it say there? It says, uh, and he shall and he shall enter into the and he shall enter into the, the countries and shall overflow and pass over. And verse 41, and he shall also enter into the glorious land, that's Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, that's the uh, Esau's descendants, and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. Now these Moab and Ammon, they're two, two, two uh, descendants of Lot, when he had those, that incestuous relationships with his daughters. Um, those were two of the nations that were born there. So they escaped. You know, and that's why the, the, this new world order is having such a trouble over there in the Middle East. They can't seem to, to get those people under their thumb. Why? Because they're ancient countries. They've been dealing with this for, for, for thousands of years. And it's in them, you know. They've been taught that from their parents and their descendants. And they know what's going on, a lot of them. They don't want, and they don't want to be deceived by it, you know. Verse 42, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold, and of silver, and of all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. You know, so that's what's happening now. You know, all the wars, all these wars since World War II, you know, it hasn't, it has, has been against third world countries, you know, basically. And some people have said, well, that's the third world war right there. It's against the third world, you know. And, and, and anyway, it's to get all the countries to get loyal to the NATO or to the uh, um, uh, countries that are loyal to Israel, you know, because uh, um, the United States actually is doing a lot of wars for Israel. The thing with Syria, they've been having problems with Israel for a long time. And uh, Israel wants to rule that whole region over there, but they're having trouble with these these few nations, you know, around uh, Israel there, the, the east of the Jordan, uh, uh, where the country of Jordan is, and uh, those descendants over there. And um, 
The Middle East doesn't want to give all their power, give up all their power to Israel. They want to remain independent. But when it when they get the the uh, 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 when they declare peace and safety, could very well be when they finally say, "Well, we have a, we are going we are ready to set up our new world order." But yet that new world order is not going to be the final new world order because there are actually two. This is a little bit confusing, maybe. But, um, you know, you, you really have to search the Bible and to read from all different angles and then make sense of it all, you know. Um, in Revelation, the 13th chapter, it says, um, uh, talking about the uh, the beast and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten, ten crowns and upon his head the name of blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear these are remnants from past kingdoms if you read the book of Daniel you see the leopard and the bear there and and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Of course, the dragon is that old serpent who is called the devil and Satan. We read that in, in chapter 12. It says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. So this, the, 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 the beast changes. Reading in Revelation, the 17th chapter, it makes it a little more clear, I think. Okay. Um, it talks about the harlot in the beginning of the chapter 17. Upon her forehead was an, a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, the word mystery it refers to a, a secret religious type of uh, if you look in strong concordance it will tell you that it's a, a secret religious initi into initiation to some kind of religious secret religious thing and um i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great awe it says admiration but john didn't admire that harley you know and the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast which thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. So that's why I'm saying there's two uh, new world orders. The, the beast is a is a is a is, a, uh, is an eighth king, and it is of the seven. You see, verse eleven. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and going to perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So this is the eighth king. And um, there are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So the seven kings are first five that have fallen, which would be Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and then the one that is Rome. That was the sixth world power, which lasted really a long time, at least 1,500 years, you know. And... Um, the seventh one, or the is the one it says, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So the one we live in now, the Anglo-American world power, which the United States is the greatest power in the world right now, uh, 
it, it will continue a short space, it says, compared to the Roman Empire. It's not going to last 1,500 years, you know. Um, and the beast that wasn't is not, even, he is even the eighth and is of the seventh and going to perdition. So the, um, this is the eighth kingdom, which is different than the seventh head. That's why we know that we're not living in that time right now of the New World Order, even though some speak as if we were. The New World Order, they're forming it, but it has not yet been formed. And uh, uh, when it is formed, it will become the eighth world power, because the United States and all of them will be submit their power, give their power to the beast, that New World Order. But this is not the final thing of the new world order. I, I, to me it seems like this is more going to be like the seventh head is going to rule this new world order and uh, and be counted as like the head of it. Uh, more like a Masonic, you know. But the real new world order is the anti-kingdom of Antichrist where the Jews will rule from Jerusalem. And they know that this seventh head has to receive a, a sword stroke, a wound, you know. And which which speaks of world war. When I say world war, I'm speaking of the signs Jesus gave. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, pestilences, and and uh, famines in places. So the that nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom is going to happen in order to receive that sword stroke to make the that world or new world order stop is not it will be as if it was not and then it will be reemerge as that uh, uh antichrist kingdom and um so these the, so there's a lot of things that have to happen but the nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom that might likely be the same as what delivers the sword stroke to the seventh head you know and um the, uh, then is when they're going to have to say peace and safety, you know. Because when they first established their new world order, or when the, let's get back, let's get to the heavens. When the devil is cast out of heaven in Revelation, the 12th chapter, the first thing that happens after there's war in heaven, you see verse 7, there's war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And it was prevailed not, neither was there any more place found for them in heaven. So the, that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now is come the salvation the strength and the kingdom of our God for the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accuses them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death rejoice therefore ye heavens and ye that dwell in them this is the the heavens are clean, the new heavens, the devil is cast out, never to return. But in verse 12 there, it says, But woe unto the inhabitants of the earth for this, and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman that brought, which brought forth the man-child. Now this woman is the same spoken of in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15 and 16, where God says, I will put enmity between you and the serpent, between your seed and, and his seed. And uh, he, will, he will bruise you in the, in the heel, but you will bruise him in, in, the, in the head. That's the fatal wound, wound of the devil. And Christ was, had the heel wound when he was crucified, or when he was impaled on the stake. Uh, but the head wound to the devil is coming. I'm going to turn this off so I can continue it.